In this lesson, Values and Data Types, we have the following learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, students should be able to define what values are in the context of programming, explain what data types are, describe characteristics of the four common Python data types, integers, floats, strings, and booleans, and finally, students should be able to use the type function. So let's begin. In programming, a value, also sometimes referred to as an object, is something that can be used, manipulated, or produced by the different instructions, commands, and operations that are written inside a program. For example, hello world is a value. How are you today is a value. And we can use those in a print command. Three and five are values as well. And we can manipulate these values, add them, for example, and we end up producing a new value, eight. Values come in many different shapes and forms. If you look at the values, hello world, how are you today, three, five, and eight, you can intuitively find a way to group them. You would most likely group three, five, and eight together because they are all numbers. As for hello world and how are you today, on the other hand, you'd probably put them in a separate group. So while we were able to group these values without much thought, if we pause and think about it for a while, we'll realize that there are specific reasons that we probably unconsciously came up with in the process of trying to group them. It's just that these are all very simple values and we have so much experience working with these kinds of values that it has become second nature for us to be able to classify them. So what might these reasons be that make it logical to group three, five, and eight together and to make another group for hello world and how are you today? Well, for one, there is a difference in how the values are written. Integers can only be made up of digits, whereas text can be made up of different letters, symbols, and even numerical characters. So it would make sense to group them based on the rules on how you write them. Here's another reason. There's also a difference in the things that you can do with the values 3, 5, 8, and all the other integers. You can use them in math. Text, on the other hand, you can't divide them. You can't get their square root and do all of these other math-related tasks. So in that regard, it makes sense to group these values also based on the things that you can do with them. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because a programming language will also group values in similar ways. They will classify them under what are called data types or simply just types. With data types, values are grouped based on the common characteristics that they have. And for certain types of values, such as numbers, a data type also determines the different ways that these values can be written. For example, a floating point number can be written in the standard way, or it can be written in scientific notation. Data types also determine the kinds of operations that can be performed on their values, like how arithmetic operations are allowed for numbers but not for text. Different programming languages define their data types in different ways. Although we're looking at data types specifically in the Python language, there are some concepts here that carry over to other languages, but know that they will not be 100% the same. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the most commonly used data types in Python. These are the integer data type, the float data type, the string data type, and the Boolean data type. These are just some of Python's built-in data types, meaning they are data types that are inherently part of the language. There are certainly more built-in data types outside of this very short list, but we will focus on these ones for now. Integers and floats are part of a broader category called numerics, while strings are part of a group called sequences. The boolean is actually a subtype of integer, 
and I will expound on that later. The integer data type, or just int, represents whole numbers. It can be a positive number, a negative number, or it can be zero. To produce a negative integer, you can apply the negation operation using the minus sign. When writing integers in Python, we do not use commas. Putting commas in an integer will either cause an error or will cause the program to behave in ways that you did not intend. So no matter how large your integer is, do not put commas in them. You can, however, use the underscore in place of a comma to group digits for better readability. For example, you can write the value 1 million like so, 1 underscore 000, zero, zero underscore 000. zero, zero. Now, I mentioned earlier that a data type determines which operations can be done on values that fall under a specific data type. For integers, these are just some of the operations that you can perform on them. You can add integers, you can subtract them, you can multiply them, and so on. Let's go ahead and try out one of these operations. Let's try out the exponentiation operation, which uses two asterisks to raise an integer to a power. I'm going to go here to the shell, and I will type two asterisk asterisk three, which means two raised to the power of three, and when I press enter, I get eight. In future lessons, we will try out more of these arithmetic expressions. For now, let's move on to the float data type. The float data type represents floating point numbers, which are numbers that contain a fractional component. Just like integers, floats can be positive, negative, or zero. But unlike integers, floating point numbers will contain one decimal point and will have an arbitrary number of digits before and after the decimal point. So these are some examples. 3.14, 123.456, 5.5, 0.0, .0 and so on. And just like integers, no commas are allowed in floats. As for operations on floats, just like integers, you can do arithmetic operations on them as well. Up next, we have the string data type. The string data type represents a sequence of characters, and it is the data type that Python uses to handle textual data. Strings are enclosed in quotation marks. It begins with a quotation mark and ends with a quotation mark as well. But the quotation marks are actually not part of the text in the sense that when you print it out or display it in a text field, for example, the quotation marks don't get displayed. But here in the interactive shell, if we type a string, and then if we press enter, we'll see that it shows us the same value with the quotation marks. But that's because the interactive shell will always just echo any value that you enter. But if we use the print function instead, which we can also use in the interactive shell, and then press enter, we see that the string does not get printed out with quotation marks. This is because the quotation marks are there to mark the start and end of the string. They are not actually part of the value to be displayed. Some of the operations that you can perform on strings are concatenation, which is the process of combining different strings to form a new string. One way of concatenating strings is by using the plus sign. We can say hello plus world, and then this gives us hello world. Take note that there is no space in between them because there are no spaces here in any of these strings when we added them. So you can either put the space at the end of hello or at the start of world. For example, hello with the space after the letter O at the end, plus world. And now we have a space in between the two words. You can also say hello plus an empty space 
plus world. And this gives us the same result. Take note that if you put multiple spaces, I can just press up to bring back the previous instruction I typed. And then if I add more spaces in here, then you'll also see the same number of spaces when it gets printed out. You can also perform indexing on a string, which is the process of getting a single character from a string. For example, from the string hello world, you can get just the letter H. There's also the slicing operation that you can perform on strings. Slicing strings refers to the process of getting a substring from an existing string. For example, from hello world, you can get the substring hello using this operation. We'll talk more about indexing and slicing in a future lesson. And finally, we have the Boolean data type. Booleans are used to represent truth values, for which there are only two. There is true and there is false. These are the only two values under the Boolean data type. In Python, you would type them as true with an uppercase T and false with an uppercase F. They are case sensitive and you do not put quotation marks around them because they are not strings. Booleans are used as part of controlling the flow of your program. Programming languages have control flow statements that will allow you to have your program do different things depending on certain conditions. We won't go into a detailed discussion about these things for now, but we will definitely talk more about Booleans and control flow statements in future lessons. So don't worry if all of this seems a little unclear for now. Another interesting thing about the Boolean data type is that it is a subtype of the integer data type. You can actually use integers to also represent true and false. The integer zero represents false and the integer one represents true. In fact, you can even add Booleans together. For example, true plus true is the same as saying one plus one. So this will give us the value two. Okay, so at this point, the Boolean data type is the last data type that I will introduce to you for this lesson. These four data types that we talked about, integers, floats, strings, and Booleans, are among the most common data types that you will be working with as a programmer. We will introduce more complex data types in the future, but for now, we will focus on these ones. And finally, I would like to introduce the type function, which is a function that can be used to check the data type of an object. Inside the parentheses of a type function call, you would pass an object. And then the type function will tell you what type of object that is. So for example, I can say type, and then in parentheses, I'll pass 25. I'll press enter, and we see that the output says class int. Int is short for integer. And for now, you can think of the word class as another word for type. I can also check for the type of hello world. And as you can see, here it says class str, where str is short for string. I can also check for the type of 25, but this time I will place 25 in quotation marks. And as you can see, it correctly says that this is a string. So the quotation marks are also important in allowing you to differentiate between an actual number or some text that just happens to be made up of numerical characters. All right, so let's try type of 3.5. 13 and it's a float and let's try type of true and it's a boolean or bull for short okay so we actually really didn't need to use the type function for these very simple examples because we can actually just look at these values and it's pretty easy for us to tell what their data types are but let's try some other examples Say you want to check what the resulting type is if you add true plus true. 
will this be a boolean or an integer? And in this case, it confirms that the result is in fact an integer. If we type true plus true, then we see the result is the integer two. So when we checked for the type of true plus true, the program actually added the values first and then checked for the type, which is why it gave us integer as the result. The type function does not return the result of the operation. Rather, it returns the data type of the result of that operation. Let's try another example. What is the type of 1 plus 1 1.0? Will this be an integer or a float? Let's press enter to find out. And here we see that in Python, if you add an integer and a float, the resulting value is a float. Okay, so that is the type function. And to end this lesson, let's have a recap. A value is something that can be used, manipulated, or produced by the different instructions, commands, and operations that are written inside a program. Values are also sometimes referred to as objects. Values are categorized under different data types. Data types describe how values are represented and what kinds of operations can be done with those values. Some common data types in Python are integers, floats, strings, and booleans. Integers represent whole numbers. Floats represent numbers with a fractional component. Strings represent textual data. Booleans represent the truth values true and false. And finally, the type function can be used to check an object's data type.